All right, so I'm gonna minimize this because this isn't in here. We're just gonna get stuff started. So as you can see, everyone who's connected, there's a workstation one through 14. These were pre-made ones that were for the final project on my server class. We're gonna create our own workstations today. Again, you're not doing this right now. You're just watching me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to file, new virtual machine, and we're gonna say on 1bserver.ddns. If you say on this computer, it's gonna make it on your computer. So I'm gonna click on that right now, and this is just gonna give us a wizard. We're gonna do custom for a reason. If we try to use the ISO, it's gonna to try to put serial numbers and cause all kinds of problems. So we're gonna manual, manually set some stuff in here. So when this comes up on the wizard, we're just gonna say custom and then next. And everyone's gonna store their stuff on the 5.7 terabyte one where it says student VM. That's where we're gonna create them. So we're just gonna make sure that first one is selected and then hit next. So this is cool where it says workstation 16 by our server is actually an ESXi 7. So it's okay to put that on ESXi 7.0. That won't hurt anything. And that gives us a little bit more stuff that we can use. See how it's 24 terabyte memory, 768 processors. It gives us a little bit more to work with. So I'm going to hit next. That's also backwards compatible uh, Fusion 12 and workstation 16X. So that should be good for our Mac users there. And then here we're just gonna pick Microsoft Windows. It should already be what the ones that one of the default ones it picks, but we're in this Dropbox, we're gonna set it to Windows 10 64 bit. So right here is what we're gonna pick. And I'm going to hit next. And here what I want you to do is put your uh put your uh, first and last name on here. And then I'm going to do what looks better. Uh, I guess we can just do. We'll just call it win 10 for now. We can always change it later, but this is how it's going to make your stuff actually the folder for where it's going to store everything. So I'm calling mine just Sean dash Spangler win 10 and then I'm going to hit next. Just do your first and last name space win 10 on yours. And we're going to do Oofy. We read about that yesterday, so we should be familiar with that. We're not going to do secure boot because that causes so many problems. For processor, we're going to make sure this has at least two processors. Well, we'll, we'll do one processor with uh, four cores on them, okay? And we, we can change this later, but for now, this will be okay. And for RAM, we're going to do 16 gigabits of RAM on them. So. You can just click actually on the number here and it'll automatically go to that number. So if you try to do it this way, it's kind of hard to get it dead on. It's easier just to click right here and put it on it. So it goes in double increments. So just like these values are probably familiar to you. They're the same ones as your IP, your bits values. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. There's your IP address stuff right there, right? So... Your bits values from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all right there. Those numbers repeat on everything we do. So I'm gonna go next, because I've set it for 16. So we're gonna use the VM network. So private network means they don't, it's not gonna have internet on private port group. So for now, we're gonna use VM network so that these machines can activate. So we're gonna do VM network and then next. So this says it wants to use LSI logic SAS, which is what servers use. And hey, I'm cool with that. We'll leave it there. SCSI recommended. We'll leave everything at recommended. Now we're going to create a new virtual disk. We don't have an existing one. We're going to create one. And here's where we pick our disk size. So the bare minimum you need for Windows 10 to run is 32. Uh, 48 will be enough for what we're doing because we're going to later we're going to add another hard drive to it. But for now, we're going to just build it with the, the defaults here, the 48 gig. Uh, and we don't need to do allocate disk space now because we're using this for the operating system side. We do. We are going to use allocated disk, disk space when we do the second hard drive to store our virtual machines and nested virtualization. So for now, we can just keep that at 48. We can always adjust this later from our settings. So I'm going to hit next. And this is the virtual hard disk is going to create is my name. Sean dash Spangler space win 10 dot VMDX. It's automatically doing it based on what I named everything in the beginning. So I am going to hit next here. And this is just 
verifying, hey, is this what you want? Is this the settings? So looking through there, it looks correct. But I want to go to customize hardware because I don't have a media to install off of yet. So I want to be able to actually install. So I'm going to go to custom hardware and I'm going to go to the CD DVD drive. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say it's, it's the location is the remote server. You can actually install off an ISO on your end, but I wouldn't recommend trying that because it's going to send the information from your your home to my server. So only it's going to be as fast as your upload. So we actually have use an ISO when we click browse. This is the part where we need to pay attention to. So this is actually Linux. We're connected to Linux here. So the VMware ESXi server we're using is Linux based. <coughs> so stuff will look a little bit weird how this is showing us directories and stuff. By default, it's going to show us the student VM folder. So this is all the student VM stuff that's in there right now. We're going to drop this down and we're going to go to COVID-1 because that's what I named that server. And we're going to go to data store one. This is where we're keeping our installation images. So I'm clicking on data store one. I can just double click it and see there's an ISO folder. This is our images for installing off. So if I double click on ISO, you'll see I have Linux, PFSense, Windows, VMware. We're doing Windows. And now in here, everything is named exactly what it would be if you downloaded it from Microsoft. So for us, if you want to know if it's uh, Windows 10, Windows 10 will be one that says client. Server is going to be one that says server. The one that's going to be the most recent version is going to be the one with the highest number here. So this is the actual version of Windows 10. We have two different ones here. We have the 19 one and we have the 2004 one right here. So we're going to click on the 1904 because that's the most recent one I have on there. And that's more like the one that's going to be in your, your, your U certify. We have 20H2 which is out, but 20H2 is not like what you're doing in U Certify. We might upgrade to that later and do, you know, do a practice upgrade and upgrade the 20H2 inside our systems. But for now, we're just trying to pick the one that's as familiar as what's going to be in your labs. So I also have the retail right here. So, but I'm going to hit OK on that. You can see I have the consumer edition of 2004 too, which is the non-evaluation. This is an eval, this is an eval, and these are all evals right here that we can get from the Windows Server, well, from Windows Evaluation Center. But we'll go over that when we install stuff in our Hyper-Vs and we'll actually go there and download them ourselves into our systems. For now, we're just going to build our workstation that's going to allow us to do Hyper-V and set up our workstation to work properly for us. So I'm just going to hit OK on that. I'm doing the 19041, and I'm going to hit Open. At this point, I should be OK. I'm going to hit close. And then this says power on the virtual machine after creation to turn uncheck that box. Sometimes it'll try to power on the machine before it created it, which is just annoying because, you know, there's nothing there, but it's still trying to talk to it. So I'm going to hit finish and you can see over here, it actually created it now. So it says Sean Spangler win 10. So I can come over here. When I click on it, it shows me stuff here. Now, it also says I can upgrade this machine. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to go power this virtual machine on, and we're going to see if we have any issues, if we have to go in the BIOS and tell it to boot off of that DVD. So I'm going to click power on. Make sure you click inside of this, and it should say push any key to boot from CD DVD. If you miss that, Control-Alt gets you out of here. If you're stuck inside of it, just come up the VM and just go up the power and say, hey, reset and try it again. You got to make sure you're clicked inside and you hit any key. So right here is the very first screen when we're going to install Windows 10. So I'm just going to leave everything default here. Our language to install English, time and currency, English, uh, keyboard, US. So I'm just going to hit next and I'm going to hit install now. And pretty much I'm just leaving everything factory here. We're just going to set this up as our default workstation. We're going to be making changes to this later, but I'm setting this up so we will run into error messages. So we see the error message and we know what to do when we've seen them. I don't like cookie cutter. I don't want stuff to be planned to have no issues because that doesn't help you learn. So here is where you're signing up for the military again or for the first time for some of you. Uh, just, yeah, sign your life away. Hit I accept. Pretty much what this says is you agree to this and you agree to any changes we make in the future to this. 
So they can they can own you if they want to. So here is something I don't ever want to hear you guys ask again after today. This says upgrade or custom. First off, this is a clean system, so there's nothing to upgrade. Second, this upgrade does absolutely nothing. This upgrade option isn't available if you start your computer using the Windows install media. So my question is, is why is this even here? So it's always going to be custom when we're doing clean installations. So here it's telling us 48 gig exactly. This is where it's going to install our operating system and deploy the image. So all we have to do from here is hit next. <coughs> so right now, where I'm at after the first install and the first reboot, this is called the out of box experience, O-O-B-E. So we'll be referring to that a lot in the future. So out of box experience means you just bought the computer, it's brand new, you turned it on. This would be the first things they would ask you if you bought a brand new computer right here. So I'm gonna say United States on this. Now here's when you're all doing this at the same time, you might get an OOBE unknown error or something here because the, the hard drives can't keep up. So it's usually good to stagger people doing this. I'm not going to use a secondary keyboard. If you had like a Spanish keyboard or a US keyboard or a Thai keyboard, you'd be able to set a secondary keyboard on here. So since this sees internet, it's going to want to try to force us to use a Microsoft account. I'm not going to do that. Excuse me. All right, so right here, it's gonna try to force us to use a Microsoft account. So we're not domain joining right now, but we're gonna use the domain join to say, no, I don't wanna use a Microsoft account. I want a local account, domain join. And now here it says, or even better, he's an online account. They're still trying to get you to do it. For the first account you're doing on here, I want you to do admin, okay? Admin. On password, if you enter a password, I'm just gonna do something. Actually, let me do something I can remember. Server123 exclamation point, that's what I'll always use. If you do a password right now, it's gonna ask you these damn security questions. What the hell? Let's try it again. So if I type it twice, it's gonna ask me security questions. I hate security questions. They never ask you these. There's no reason for these to be here. They're not going to tell you your password to log into Windows if you know your security questions. So I'm going to go back, back, and I'm going to just do this again. Admin, next, no password. I don't want to answer security questions. I will set a password once I log into it. When you're setting up 20 computers in a row or 50 computers in one day, you don't want to waste your time. And here, I don't give anything away for free. You're not gonna use any of these features in the virtual machine, so I just turn everything off in here. We don't need the waste bandwidth talk. They're gonna steal your information anyways. I mean, each time you have Google Chrome in here, they're gonna keep on resetting your default browser on you every time there's an update. So do more across, nope. And nope, Cortana, you died in Halo, you can die now. Go away. Now, imagine setting up 50 laptops at the same time, and Cortana sees you have a microphone on every laptop, and they all start talking at the same time to you. Now, if only you could set up every single step with your voice, that would be awesome, but you can't. That's where I really started to hate Cortana, because when it saw microphones on those laptops when we set them all up at one time, we used Clonezilla to set them all up, and holy crud. Hello, I am Cortana. I am your virtual assistant. 
Cortana, you better shut up. <laughs> and that's before they redid her. Now she's her own application. Cortana used to be built into Windows. Now it's actually an, its own application and doesn't work near as good as it used to. So the search bar on your taskbar, that used to be called Cortana. It wasn't a search bar. Now it's a search bar again. All right, it's just about done setting everything up. So first thing I check, let me alt tab out of here. I know this is gonna look small on your guys' side, but first thing I check is, am I activated? So right here, it says Windows license, 90 days, right? 90 days, so the eval did activate. It needs internet to activate. If it didn't, it would say expired license here. So the next thing, the most important thing on your computer is your time. Remember, everything's based on a clock rate. So if you wanna download updates, do backups. If your time's wrong, you're not gonna be able to do backups. It's gonna think you're in the future or that you're way too far in the past. So why are you talking to me? Your clock is messed up. You might be trying to hack me. So if you see my time, my time zone is off. The time is correct, but my time zone is off. So we will fix that first thing. So I'm just gonna click on it. Maybe, hey you. It's still doing something in the background right now. All right, so I'm gonna adjust date and time. I'm just gonna change this to central standard time. US, not Central America, even though there's not really a difference. So now my time says 11.09, which looks like the same as my host computer, so I'm good to go there. I'm activated. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm just going down my quick checklist in my head. I wanna make sure so I have Hyper-V on here. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna type T-U-R. This will take me to the turn windows features on or off. This is also in the control panel. If you go to applications, so if I come over here, right click on this and go to apps and features, we can also get to that from here. So we have optional features and then if we scroll down, we'll have turn features on or off down here. But for me, I prefer just to type T-U-R. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Windows search feature sucks. But almost anything you wanna to get to on Windows, you can just type it right here. Click on it and start typing it. That's not the same as clicking here and typing it. This is a different search. You see how it looks different? If I click here and start typing it, it's completely different. So when I say click on the start button and start typing, I'm not telling you click on the start button and then click on search. That's two different things, see? Two different searches. So in here, I have Hyper-V. So I might've forgot to do something here, so I'm gonna show you this. So if I click on this, see how this is grayed out here? It says Hyper-V cannot be installed. The process, the processor does not have the required virtualization capabilities. So if you guys remember in your A plus course, your processor must have to have the virtualization capabilities of the AMD or the Intel, right? So since it doesn't have that, this is only gonna allow me to install the management tools. So I need to fix that. To fix that, that's actually on the Hyper-V side. Well, on the, the VMware side, it's gonna get confusing because we have two of these. So I'm gonna say, okay, Okay, I'm just gonna cancel out of that really quick and I'm gonna shut this down properly. Remember, I don't have a password on this yet. That's just to save me time for doing setups right now. So with a proper shutdown, I can go and change my processor. I could probably have done it when it was running, but it's best practices if you're changing hardware, make sure it's turned off, treat it like a real computer, turn it off, make your hardware changes, turn it back on. Properly shut it down, don't just pull the power on it. <coughs> so I'm gonna go edit this virtual machine and I'm going to processor, right here, processor. See where it says virtualization engine, VTX, EPT, or AMD, V slash RVI. We're gonna check that box right here, and we're also doing the virtualized CPU performance counters. 
From there, we can hit OK and turn her back on. Again, I'm showing you the error stuff and stuff that won't work. So later, if you forget to do it, it's in this video. You can fall back on it, take notes on the video. Uh, again, I suggest when we're doing stuff right now, if there's something you think you need to dot, you know, jot down as notes, write down the time. Just write down the time because you'll see it in the video. You'll have the time in the bottom right-hand corner there when we get into it, and you can just fast forward to that spot and then take your notes. It'll just save you time and allow you to focus on what helps you focus or go back and take your notes. I suggest to take as many notes as possible and try and write stuff as a tutorial. I mean, and then figure out what what's really applicable. What do you need to write down and which don't what don't you need to write down? So you're only going to know that from experience and what helps you and doesn't help you. Again, I'm severely dyslexic, so I need to put stuff in a mechanical order. I need it needs to be like the flow of water. Where's the flow stopping? So So our time is good. Everything else is good. Right here says yay. So now if I type T-U-R, when this is finished loading, T-U-R, sometimes this won't show up when you type T-U-R, so. <coughs> now if I go to Hyper-V, nothing's grayed out. It knows I can actually do it. So I'm just going to minimize, collapse that, and I'm just going to put the checkbox here. A checkbox here means nothing's being left out. If something's being left out, like this network framework right here, it means there's not a checkbox here. So. All that does is means everything has been selected. You don't have to drop it because everything's already have a checkbox on it inside of there. So with that done, I can hit OK. Now this is actually going to turn on those features. Uh, once they're turned on, it's going to say you need to restart your computer for these features to be applied. So we're going to allow that to happen. So there is a glitch in Windows where the Exploit protection built into Windows 10 makes your Hyper-Vs restart on their own. So that's the next step on here is we're going to go in there. We're going to go into that exploit protection and we're going to make a modification to it. So it doesn't restart our virtual machines when you're in the middle of doing stuff. Because there's nothing more annoying than that. The only other thing that would cause that to happen would be is if your installation is the eval and it never activated. If it's not activated, it will shut down every hour on the hour on you. And we're just building our computer from scratch that you're going to use for doing all your labs. So that you will be doing with me. So that'll be after you do your use certify stuff. So we're going to try to apply and fill in the blanks that you certify misses in the ebook and in the lab instructions and focus on the 70% that you need to know to pass your exam and to get you a job. Just like uh, a plus, I'm not going to waste time on IPv6. When you might have one question and it's not going to matter when you're in the field if you know how to break down IPv6 in the binary. It's not going to matter. But it's going to waste a lot of time if I focused on it, right? So We need to put the bytes and bits that you're actually going to retain and then you can focus on that other stuff later. We're going to teach you how to drive and then you need to go drive, get your fender benders and everything and learn what to do and what not to do. All right, so at this point, I should have Hyper-V. So just a tech, I can type HY, and I have Hyper-V Manager right here. So I'm going to pin it to the start, and I'm going to pin it to the task. That way, it's always going to be right here. So if I want to get to it later, I can just click on it and get to it. It's not going to work properly right now. It's going to act like it, and everything's going to test out. But I know, just from experience, I need to make that change to the exploit protection. So to get to exploit protection, again, let me click out of here. I'm, all I am is clicking on the Windows button, and I'm going to type EXP. See how it says exploit protection right there? That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to click on it, and now I'm in the Windows security. They might call this Windows Defender. They've, they've rebranded this over and over. In Windows 10, they've called it uh, Windows Defender Windows. Windows Defender Security, and they just used to call it Windows Firewall. Now they switched it to Windows Defender Firewall and just calling this Windows Security. It's it's annoying. The stuff that's going to cause us problem is the CFG. We don't want to change it here, though. We're just going to go to Program Settings, and we're going to go all the way to the bottom. 
So see this vmcompute.exe and this vmwp.exe? These are the ones that cause our problems. We have to actually add the roles and features of Hyper-V before we can come in here and do this because these won't exist until we actually do that. So we're going to just do the drop down and we're going to go to edit. And I'm going to scroll down. There's only been one thing in here that's set. See right here, the CFG? We're going to say off and apply. Now, this is the UAC that pops up. I don't know if you can see it or not, but UAC right here, user account controls. This is just verifying, hey, you're an administrator and you have the rights to do this. Yes. So I'm going to go to the other one, the very bottom one. I'm going to go to edit and say the same thing. Scroll down till I find it, and I'm going to click this off on the CFG, the control flow guard. Boom. Apply. Yes. After doing that, that is best practices when you make any changes, restart the system. Even if it doesn't tell you to restart it, that was a system-wide change. I'm going to close it, and I'm going to just going to, once again, I am going to restart this. Again, this is also why I don't have a password on here, because I don't have to type it every time I restart. I am just initially setting my system up. And as you can see, it's obviously doing something because it's taken longer than it restarted with the Hyper-V. So it's applying some of that stuff, even though it didn't say you needed to. You'll see when we make uh, virtual memory changes, some of you, it's going to say, you need to restart your computer. Others, it's not going to tell you that. But you just did the exact same thing everyone else did. So again, I'm just sharing my experience and what I've seen with you guys. So hey, put this on your checklist. Check this stuff. If you want Hyper-V to work correctly, you can set this up on your home computer. You need Pro to do it. You can just grab an evaluation and install the eval on your home computer if you want or buy, buy a computer just to practice on. And just keep going. E evaluations are free. You get that 90 days. You can rearm it three times. Now, if you put the server eval, you get 100 in, I think, 190 days or 160 days. I'm probably wrong. Or No, I think it's 180 days in between there somewhere. But you get 180 days that you can rearm twice, and it's still Windows 10. It just has server stuff, and it's been cleaned up with le a lot less of the bloatware in it. If you have issues with drivers, just still install Windows 10 on it regularly. Grab that System32 folder, copy it to a USB drive, install the server on it, and point it to that for your drivers. And it will, Windows 10 drivers are the same drivers you need for the server because the server is still based on Windows 10. They just try to trick you and say, oh, you need to buy this extra stuff to work on it. You don't. There's, there's a workaround for everything. All right. So now that that's all on, functional, and working, I want to make sure that Hyper-V actually works. I pinned it right here. So remember, I pinned it so I can get to it easy. So my main thing, I'm not even going to install anything. I'm just going to create a real quick virtual machine. And remember, this is nested virtualization. This machine here, which is we're going to call this our workstation or our host, is a virtual machine on its own. It's a lot more stable because it's VMware. You're going to learn to hate Hyper-V because Hyper-V has so many bugs. So right now, this is the name of my computer. We will change that in a second, but right now our goal is just to make sure full system functionality, right? So each time you make a change, make sure it hasn't broken something else. So I'm gonna just full screen that. I'm gonna go new, virtual machine, and I'm not gonna set it up. I'm just gonna say finish. I don't care, I just wanna finish. No, I got mine jokes, okay guys? There's ladies in the class. Very rude, who thought about that? I don't think about it. All right, I just got fired again, didn't I? Damn it. Come on, guys. Girls, come on. Play. We need jokes. All right, so I just created that. Now I'm going to go start. And I just want to see, does it turn on without an error message? And connect actually connects to it, so it, it it's running without me seeing it. So you can you can double click that. You can just right click and connect. So as long as there's something showing up here and there's no error message, I clicked it too many times. 
So it, we didn't. We never set anything up, so don't expect it to boot or do anything. I got something on my computer screen. That means it's functioning. So I'm good to go. It's cool. I'm going to go to action, and I'm just going to power this off really quick. Turn it off. I know it works. So what this did is this actually created a virtual machine. Now, if I try to do this again, so I click on this and I go delete. You think it's gone, but if I go new virtual machine and do the same thing I just did finish, it's not gone. So there's going to be a virtual disk still sitting there wherever it created this. So if you're doing stuff and you delete it, Make sure you delete the virtual disk that it created too, or else you can't create one with the same name. So I'm waiting for this. It's going to give me the error message in a second. It's because that virtual disk is still sitting there where we recreated the original. We deleted the information for setting up the hardware, but we didn't actually delete this virtual disk. Now, if you don't know where it is, it tells you right here. It straight up tells you your location right here. C drive, users, public, documents, Hyper-V, virtual hard disks, new virtual machines, dot VHDX, right? It's telling me it exists. All it does is tell you is it failed to create it. And all it says is it failed to create. It's not telling you that it already exists, right? That's a horrible message when all it could say is something already, someone with something with the same name is already there. That's why I can't do this. They're not going to tell you that. So my way of cheating is I come over here to edit disk. I just say do not show this again because I don't need them to show that. And right here, it's got the location, right? So I don't need to try to navigate there and delete it. But even easier, I can just go browse, right click on that new virtual machine, virtual hard disk, and just say delete. Now, I'm not using this edit for anything. I'm just going to hit cancel. I was just using it as a shortcut to get there. because I don't want to type that, and I don't want to click and navigate there. I hate typing. I suck at typing. I'm a tab typer. So now if I said new and create, which it should still be sitting here, if I just said finish, now it's going to work. So if you get that error message, I'm going to ask you, did you create it before and delete it? Is there a virtual hard disk still sitting there? No need to lie. Just tell me, yeah, it did. Okay. Then I'm like, okay, go here, and we'll do that. So again, I just created it. So I'll just go back here and delete it again. I just wanted to show you that's why that error message will pop up. And I'm again, I'm just using edit disk to cheat to get there. Since I did that checkbox right here, it skipped that screen. So I can just go to browse and what I did before, just click and delete. And then cancel and cancel. I'm just using it as a tool to get to where I need to get to. So we know this works, so I'm done with that for now. I'm going to empty my recycle bin because I put stuff in the recycle bin. Safe is, uh, space is at premium on our server here. So we're trying to keep stuff as clean as possible. So we're going to need some tools, right, guys? So some of you were asking me about uh, Office 360, 365, and some other stuff. We're going to use Night Night to grab stuff. So this has at least the newer version. No, this doesn't have the newer version of Microsoft Edge on it, but it'll be okay for what we're going to do. So I'm going to go to Night Night. And for some reason, this flipped over the Joshua. Let me flip it back to everyone else. <laughs> do not do N-I-N-N-I-T-E.com, okay? Don't do that. That is not a website you want to go to. So, and I'm just going to go type it up here now, N-I-N-I-T-E dot com. And this is where we get the industry lead in uh, freeware, free software. And I'll show you exactly why we're doing this. Because <coughs> there's lots of powerful tools on here, even CGI tools. And it's all in one location. Each time you download from here, everything is fully up to date. And if you keep the EXE that you download from here, every time you run it, it will update your software to the most up-to-date version of that. So as an administrator, this saves you a lot of time. So I'm going to scroll down like, okay, I want Chrome. Hell, let's do the new Edge too. If we wanted to put Zoom, Discord, Skype, Thunderbird, we could put that on here. What I'm looking for is I want OpenOffice, which I see over here. Uh, I think more of the modern... I don't think OpenOffice is as supported as it used to be, so LibreOffice would be another one that you could do instead. 
Uh, I'm just going to do open office because that's what we've been using. And it's been okay. It has its bugs every now and then, but it's okay. Uh, and then Notepad++ is something that I like just to introduce you guys to. So if you're writing codes and stuff, sometimes Notepad, the newer version of Notepad, if you zoom in and zoom out, for some reason it changes the font, it saves it as, and if you try to cut and paste that in the PowerShell, for some reason it doesn't think it's what you actually typed. So Notepad++ is meant for coding. So it's under development tools, Notepad++ right here. And if you needed like burning software, we have image burn. If you want to open up images and extract them, uh, there's all kinds of tools in here. Uh, Blender is a CGI software for doing 3D design. You can design games. You can do 3D printing stuff in it. Everything. It's super powerful. So you can feel free to look through here for your home computer. But for ours, I just want Chrome, the open office, and you can put Edge on there too because Microsoft's going to update it anyway. So we might as well just do it as is. If you want to watch videos, VLC is what most people use that'll so play any form of media. We have Media Monkey. We have all kinds of stuff. So even Winamp, that's old school. For security, you have AVG. We have all these virus scans. These are all real ones. These aren't fake ones. I've always used Avast in the past. Right now, I use uh, Sophos. because Sophos is kind of enterprise grade. But yeah, feel free to look around through here. But what's cool about this, when I hit get your night night, nine night or knee night, whatever they want us to call it, they also have a version that you can pay for that you can actually do an MSI and push it out across a domain. So you can actually manage all your computers on a domain and push out this free software. And instead of paying for Office, you can push out this stuff. So you can say, this installer includes the Chrome, the Edge, the Notepad++, and OpenOffice. So I'm just going to, for this, I, I'm trying to save space. So I'm just going to say run. I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to say run. That way it only has a temporary file. Then when I do a cleanup later, it will be cleaned up and out of here. Because we're just building this so we have tools for class. So you can go in there, you can do your stuff, you can submit your homeworks from in here. If your computer at home doesn't have tools, your virtual machine does have the tools to do your homework. So right now, this is actually gonna download everything. It's downloading Chrome, it's gonna download Edge, Notepad++, and OpenOffice. And you don't have to ans answer any questions so if you're building an image to deploy and you want the stuff all already on that image that you're going to deploy since that stuff has never been opened your system doesn't have an ssi well an sid assigned to it so that makes it much easier to put this stuff on here if you did this manually it could cause problems and break your uh system prep so when you generalize if this stuff has any identifiers on it it could break it so this is a good way to avoid that in the first place So hopefully this helps you, at least on your home computer too, if you need these tools and you don't have anything. OpenOffice is a good, and LibreOffice is the one you'll usually see on uh, Linux, are very good ones to not have to fall into buying Office 365. So I'll let that finish really quick. I believe they don't uh, they don't support open office like they used to as much so I think Libre is the one that's the better one to go with. But uh Yvonne's going to use open office so I'd rather you guys get used to it with me before he kills you for not using it. So the next thing we want to do in that open office is we're going to want to set open office so that it actually uh saves everything as a dot doc. Uh, Yvonne doesn't want anything as docx. He wants everything as 97.doc format. So we'll set it so it default does that for us. And this is why I'm doing a video so you can go back to the video and catch up on what you know you might have missed. There'll be the Zoom video, but I'm also going to upload this into a YouTube so that it's just for this class. So everything we do in our class that I do YouTube uh, videos for, I'll do it. I'll upload it into that uh, playlist for you guys. Again, this is going to take a little bit. Uh, hopefully, people aren't doing this right now. It's very easy to find out because I will see them. There we go. See them show up on my desktop. The new Edge, Google Chrome, Notepad++. 
Now, open office is going to be the last one that goes into here. Hey, my arrows came back. Go away. Now, when this is done, it's not going to say, it's not going to close. It's going to say, complete. <laughs> so when it's done doing this, this this will still be up there. Just You're, you're going to have to read what it actually says right here. Instead of saying cancel, it's going to say something different here. There we go. So I find it's better to have you guys do this in intro so that you guys, you know, you've at least built a system one time and this is what you're going to be using for yourself. So I'm going to go see how now it's got a close option instead. It's done. It says everything's by default. If you don't click the show details, you're not going to see that stuff. It's just going to look like that. You might think it's still working. So I'm just going to hit close. That's good to go. So in my head, I know here I want to fix how this saves. I don't need to make any changes to these. When you open it up, it's gonna be like it's the first time you've ever used them, which is good. So I'm gonna go to Open Office really quick. And this is Open Office. I'm gonna hit Next. And you can fill this information if you want. Ow! Oh, I always drop my mouse. I don't know how I manage to do that all the time. I'm gonna Velcro this to my desk. All right, so here I can do text mo documents, spreadsheets, presentations. You know these as PowerPoint, Excel, uh, drawing, database, access pretty much, formulas, templates. Uh, I don't need to worry about any of this stuff right now. I'm going to come up to Tools, and I'm going to go to Options. And I'm going to go to Load Save. Load Save, I'm going to drop it, and I'm going to go to General. So in General, at the bottom here, it says Document Types, Text Document. Always save as. By default, it's going to do it as the open office format, the ODF text document. We don't want that. We're going to click on this and we're going to change it to Microsoft Word 97 2000 XP. This is the most compatible format with everything that's out there, and that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to click on that. Now it says Microsoft Word 97 2000 XP. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to click on text document. And if I go File, Save As, right here, Save As Type, Microsoft Word 97000 XP. So that's good. I'm going to hit Cancel on that because I don't actually need to save that, and I'm going to close it. So I've made that change to the settings. That's good to go. So the other thing we want to do is we're going to use Google Chrome. And we want to add our canvas to it so remember don't don't just go on and google canvas and go to it because canvas is not what you're logging into you're logging into cybertext.institute.com so i'm going to copy that on my host computer right now on my home computer and to paste into this We can just come up to here and go to edit and say paste. That'll paste from my computer I'm sitting at inside of this machine. From there, I'm just going to hit enter. And then I am going to make that my home page. Another thing you can do is you can just take this over here, click right here, and drag it to your desktop. So now I can close that really quick. And when I click on that icon right there, it's gonna I'm gonna do it in Google Chrome, and I'm also gonna make so Chrome is my default browser. So now I have a link that takes me straight to here and I can log in and do my stuff. So <coughs> 
I'm going to just log into my account. I can't type. I can't even spell my name. All right, there we go. I was going to say stay, stay, signed, stay signed in, log into it. And I'm going to go to our class. And I saved my password right there just to save me for later because this is only going to be for you, the one you're making right now. And I'm going to scroll down because one of our other assignments is going to be how to submit an assignment. I'll turn that back on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come steal it from member yesterday. Or maybe it wasn't member yesterday. Let me go back one. I'm brain farting. Was it the one before? it? Maybe not. All right, maybe we'll do that later. I know one of those I had it on here. Huh. Well, I'll give you the format. We're going to create a template later, so we'll do that on Monday. So, but I would prefer you guys get in there so you can actually log into your Canvas on here because if you have any issues with stability on your computer at home, you can always use your virtual machine connected to this and go in there and do your labs and everything. You know if I'm forgetting anything here. I don't think I am. All right. So that's what I want to do with that. So we have the log in the canvas. You can also change your icons if you want to that. So you can go to properties and we can, uh, where's it under general? Do, 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 do. Oh, there it was. Change icon right there. And you can change it just so you like, hey, it's canvas. Let's just make it look different. There we go. It's kind of similar to the canvas one. So definitely looks like the you certify one. So that just makes it easier to get to it. It's built into here. Uh, the very, very last thing I want you guys to do is I want you to do control alt delete. And here, control alt delete is right here. You can just click this button right here. It says control alt delete, or I believe it's control alt insert on your keyboard keyboard does it inside the virtual machine so control alt insert does it inside the virtual machine if you do control alt delete on your computer it's going to do it on your home computer so i'm going to go to change password and i want the password there is no old password and i want the admin password to be the server one two three one sec at exclamation point and same thing right here. So I want it to be this on everybody's. Cause you're going to create your own account for yourself. This is just in case you forget something on yours or you mess up, we can log into the ad admin account and change things. So once that's done, I'm going to hit submit. And now that's the password on here. The very, very last thing that we are going to do, we'll, we'll create the user accounts later for yourselves, is we're just going to come up and we're going to run the Windows update. Just type up and it should say check for updates. And right here it says your device is missing important security and quality fixes. I'm going to say check for updates and it's going to have a ton to do. Once that's done, we are done setting up our workstation for the day. So I'll probably have two to three runs of updates before it's completely updated. Now, a way to make this not kill my network would be to have us connect to the WASU server. But for right now, I want you guys just to practice the basics of an initial deployment. And you're setting up this workstation for you to use. Now, we'll do more advanced stuff on Monday. 
where we'll add another hard drive to it. We'll create your personal user accounts. We'll create the template for how to turn stuff in. And I'll do a practice assignment for turning something in. But for now, this is all we need on this video. This is doing updates. And it, as this is going, it's going to say you need to restart, restart it, log back in, and then say run updates again. Keep running updates till there's no more updates to do. When you restart, it's going to say it's up to date. It's not. Hit the button to check for updates, and it'll find more updates. Do that until it doesn't. So I am going to stop this video right now and upload it to YouTube. So hopefully this will help you guys.